Honey, and thank you for joining us. Um, yeah, it's looking like a good day up there in Auckland. Um, yeah, no, not too bad up here today. To present your report to us um, with your co-pilot, uh, Marley, that we have here in the room. Uh, we'll hand over to you two as we look to item six on our agenda, review of the Lake Taupo Protection Project and your independent findings. Kia ora. Yeah, I might just start um, by first of all thanking you all for your patience as we um, get to this particular item. Um, Ronnie Gossai, kia ora Ronnie, has joined us from KPMG. We are waiting on one um, other um, staff member to join. Um, no doubt she'll be with us momentarily. Um, as we wait for Maya to join, I might just take a couple of minutes to, um, I guess, set the scene before handing over to KPMG, particularly for our new members who haven't been part of this process to date. Um, as, as you're all aware, um, really important project, the Lake Taupo Protection Project um, and the Trust has fulfilled the initial purpose of the project, which was to uh, reduce the amount of nitrogen leaching into the lake by 20%. Um, the focus for the project, therefore, has shifted to monitoring of um, the contracts and agreements entered into, as well as compliance and enforcement. And um, back in 2018, uh, initially, the project was um, scheduled um, to be completed. However, um, the settlers, the well, Waikato Regional Council, Taupo District Council and the Crown, extended the project um, for a further term up to the 30th of June 2021 and then uh, recently um, extended the project again to uh, 30 June 2023 and in doing so um, flagged that uh, a complete review of the governance and management of the project um, needed to be undertaken. Um, which kicked off this process essentially. Um, to support the review, the Joint Committee had set up an officials working group and um, four um, of the parties, I guess, that are involved in the project have all put forward um, senior staff to uh, be part of that working party, working group, officials working group. Essentially, the officials working group provides that interface between, um, I guess, getting the review done at an operational level and um, yourselves governance. Um, one of the roles of the officials working group was to select an uh, independent reviewer from a list. Um, the list was um, initially uh, KPMG, BDO and um, PWC uh, and through the process um, all three of those organisations were invited to put forward a proposal to undertake the work. Um, long story short, KPMG um, were assessed to be um, the organisation best to undertake the independent review and so have been engaged to do that. Um, a key Actually, um, the scope of the review is set out in uh, your report that has been circulated. Um, but essentially, the key, a key outcome of the work was to produce a, uh, a final report to the Joint Committee, um, which summarises the approach um, that Cap KPMG have um, undertaken their findings and the analysis and um, also some options for future management and governance of the project. And so that report has been delivered by KPMG. It has been circulated as part of the agenda and KPMG have set aside the next half an hour or so to walk you through their findings. So um, I see Maya hasn't yet arrived, but I will... Uh, oh, no, she is online. Kira, I am here, Maya, Kira. Kira, Ronnie. Um, let me hand over to the team at KPMG. No worries, just firstly, just testing you guys can hear us, Marley. Loud and clear. 
All right, fantastic. Well, thank you for the um, intro and uh, appreciate the um, opportunity to come here and present today. Um, so firstly, um, um, my name is Ronnie Gosai and I'm presenting on behalf of uh, KPMG. Um, and I've also got um, a partner that was uh, leading this engagement, Maya Brooks, um, who's here as well. Um, so I'll just uh, share screen, Marley. Let me know if this pops up for you. So I just think um, as well, um, I know this is obviously probably a sensitive report, if I call it that, in terms of content and perspective. So what I would appreciate is that we just take you through a high level run through the report and then sort of take it as read and then therefore and then get your feedback observations. Um, some of them we may be able to respond to in the conversation, but some of them we might need to take away, investigate, because I think, you know, to give it the time, the consideration and to reflect on your feedback. Um, we've also had feedback from via Marley about the first draft of the report and obviously updated that um, where there was any omissions of information or different perspectives or different, pers you know, we want to really consider and take that. So just really want to premise the whole 30 minutes with that, you know what I mean? So that we, we're we listening to you, we, understand, we you know, we're working through if there's any um, anything we've misrepresented or anything like that, that's always useful to, to get in these conversations. So just wanted to really contextualize that before Ronnie goes through the sort of the report. Is that okay with everybody? Veronica, perfect. Thank you. No worries. We'll get going. Um, so, firstly, um, yeah, this uh, our review was um, around this Lake Tobler Protection Project, as as Marley just introduced, um, with a key, um, uh, yeah, key role of undertaking the Section Seventeen um, A review under the uh, Local Government Act. Um, so. In terms of our process, um, so our engagement kicked off on the 23rd of August and we initially stepped into this service delivery analysis um, uh, phase. So so firstly, our team um, went away and we um, just went through the Section 17A again and a bit of a refresh for our team members. Um, so we got together and just understood what that outcome um, uh, was going to look like and the process that we needed to follow. Um, and then we stepped into our document review and interview phase. Um, so we had a whole lot of you um, that, that are part of this call that were involved in that. And we brought in our local government experts as required um, throughout that process. Um, and then that all stepped into our um, options um, review as well. So we started to look at um, what's currently happening with the delivery of this project and what would the future um, look like so looking at things like the future governance um, and the current governance um, management etc um, and then stepped through into uh, iwi collaboration and and reforms so we looked at the likes of um, kopapa kaitiaki um, to kopuaka napa napa in that space um, as well as all the local government change and movement that's happening um, at the moment um, and then that that sort of flowed through and we landed um, last friday where we issued our final deliverable Um, so in terms of um, where we landed, so so we went through a process of um, long listing uh, all the possible delivery options that we we saw uh, as, as to align with the Section 17A review. Um, so our team um, had this list, and we got together and uh, ran an internal workshop where um, we took everything that we'd heard through mm -hmm. through the interview process, through the document review. Um, and then cull that down really because we wanted to be a bit more focused around our review. So we landed with these four options that you can see on the screen now. Um, so firstly, status quo, which is essentially the Lake Topo Protection Project and the trust as it currently operates, so joint committee and um, CCO operation. Um, second was uh, in-house delivery of the current Lake Topo Protection Project functions um, through uh, Waikato Regional Council. Um, and similarly, again, uh, number three with um, delivering all the functions through Topo District Council. And then there was also some merit to this shared um, delivery uh, arrangement as well. So this was discussed in some of the interviews, so we just wanted to um, bring this up as well. So these were the four um, key delivery options that we looked at um, going forward. Um, and then we stepped through uh, two main areas that we were focused on. Um, so firstly, a financial um, element, so under, un really understanding what, what that would look like, and then a non-financial piece as well. And so we took these two uh, key areas and then um, ranked them out of five for each of them, um, summed them up together, and then we um, achieved this ranking that you can see at the bottom. 
Um, so in terms of financial uh, ranking, I'll just step through how each of these options um, uh, played out. So um, in terms of financial benefits, we so from one being the uh, least benefit to the project and, and five being uh, of greatest uh, benefit. Um, so you can see there that the um, status quo or the Lake Topo Protection Project or the trust um, came up as one, um, and this is purely to do with um, the, the likes of the administration costs. We're looking at things like uh, professional services um, and, and where, what was needed uh, for the future phase of this project as well. And so this um, landed as the least favorable. Um, and then you can see uh, the next couple uh, there, so we've got Waikato Regional Council in-house delivery as well as TDC in-house delivery that both ranked as five being uh, most favorable. Um, so we were looking again at this engine that was running for the Lake Topo um, Trust uh, versus bringing this into one of the uh, regional or district councils, and that's where we had this um, the split. Um, and then the last one, the, sh the shared uh, um, service agreement between WRC and TDC. Um, this dropped a little bit because we saw um, just that need for the administration cost and sharing um, between the two organizations and we we know that that will take a bit of time etc so um, that one we gave a score of three so all up you can see um, that's how the financial scoring took place um, the next one was the non-financial um, benefits so um, the Lake Topo Protection Project and the Trust as it currently stands, so the status quo um, ranked best in this space. Um, so we're looking at things like um, direct focus on project outcomes, um, being independent from the regulator, um, the locality of uh, understanding um, the people there and just those contracts that have been set up. So um, yes, yeah, scored quite favorably in that space. Um, next couple were the Waikato Regional Council and the and TDC, as you can see, they're scoring there. Um, and then also the sh the shared um, agreement between WRC and TDC. So the key sorts of um, split that we saw there was a bit more access to the science, um, water quality, soil, etc. expertise um, through WRC and TDC. Um, so just having those wider con uh, wider council networks. Um, a TDC scored a bit more favorably again, being being local, um, which was one of the key differentiators uh, from WRC and being separate from the regulator, et cetera. Um, so you can see, uh, yeah, TDC scored second best um, in that space. Um, so all up, we, we took that away and um, ranked these. Um, and as you can see, TDC um, scored most favorably. The um, key drivers being um, a significant financial benefit from um, shifting to TDC in-house delivery, um, as well as still having quite a strong uh, non-financial uh, benefit uh, across the whole thing. So that's essentially um, a summary, Mali, of where we landed. Um, yeah, happy to take any questions or if yeah. there's anything further. And I think just the, as you hopefully see in the detailed report, we've been trying to be very transparent on the logic, the rationale and the evidential piece through this. Um, yeah, and put in a framework around it for the 17A review. So in the document there's, you know, what, building on what Ronnie said, there's quite a lot of information in the, in the report of sources of information, stakeholders met, but also there are the, the um, Detailed breakdown, for example, of each of the financial benefits or the commercial benefits and the non-financial benefits, so that you can see the the logic, the rationale, and the transparency around that um, to the to the path to, you know suggested. Um, but also recognizing where the where the project is in its life cycle as well, and you know that so it's where it is and what it's looking to achieve at this last or this next phase of the project. So it's not a reflection of anything that's happened before, and it is commendable of where the project has got to, and the and the results and the outcomes achieved is where it is at this stage of the project. I think that's really keen to to really articulate to the to the to the to the group. Yep, and just to add to that as well, Maya is a very independent and process driven review as well. So section 17A is is quite rigid in terms of the things that we do need to look at. So the likes of these financial elements and the non financial. So um, yeah. Uh, just just wanted to add that as well. Oh, thanks. So maybe over to you for questions, queries or observations. Yeah, thank you for the summary of what we've been through and the report of where you've got to. 
and in particular the clarity of um, the preciseness of a 17A review. We appreciate the work that you've put in there. So thank you on behalf of this joint committee. Uh, Stu, you've got a question there? Yeah, thank you. Um, H41 an analysis of the financial numbers. Oh, so, it, so we just got to do a bit oh, of translation sorry, between, between all page, your board papers. 20, and, yeah. Yes, sorry, page 27. Yep. Okay. I just was a bit confused there. You, you, you put the status quo WRC in house, PDC in house, and then that is shared. You've got down there trustee expenses and employee expenses as clearly, um, say, taking trustee simply by exchange status quo then equal for the other options. And I didn't quite understand what you meant by that because I would have thought the trustee expenses would, would, would dissolve effectively if we wouldn't meant to any of those other options. Just, I, don't, I must read the, the use of the terminology. Yeah, so so when we looked at this, um, so we, this wasn't an exhaustive uh, costing analysis where we were able to you know go into each organisation and and understand that that cost. But w from um, looking at this, there we understood there would be some sort of governance or management cost in line with um, that trustee expense that we saw there. Therefore, um, you know, without going into this deep costing exercise. Um, we felt that 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 level of cost was uh, equal across across all four. Okay. So would that would that be referring to the trustee expenses and councillors governance cost of this sort of and either of the whichever council took it on? Yeah, we didn't step into the exact detail around that, but but we felt there would be yeah some magnitude of cost in that space. So maybe I think, I think that's a great point of maybe I think the word instead of trustee expenses would be governance expenses or oversight expenses just to be the clarity. So that's a really useful observation okay. of the terminology. Okay. That's a governance expense. Okay. No, thank you. Thank you. No, no, but that's exactly why we put these things in front of everybody because I'm just satisfied as until it's taken few recommendations, taken future service deliveries, the way it's delivered by TDC, they'll make that. Are there any other questions or comments around the review findings, the review that we have in front of us? Um, just in light that we do have KPMG. I do understand that probably as a committee we will have further discussion, but is there any other discussion that we would like to have while we have these people with us? I, I just, kia ora, it's okay. Lorena here from oh. the Ministry for Sorry, the Environment. Sorry, go ahead. Um, I, so, I, firstly, um, I just want to say I found um, the report really um, easy to read. You can follow the methodology um, and I like the way that you've set out the criteria to sort of give you some commonality in terms of how you would rate the various options. And I suppose from my perspective, looking at the nine financial benefits, which seems to be the most critical component that we as a committee would need to discuss, and um, particularly in terms of, um, you know, where there are variances around, if I was thinking option one, TDC, option two, WRC, the, the bits that we would need to resolve is the ability to monitor and action external factors such as the overseer and also the access to science and expertise and I wonder if you had any other insights in terms of you've mentioned say overseer if there's anything else that came up within those um, particular areas that you think would be really important as a committee for us to sort of be cognizant of to go into the detail to be really clear about how that would look in practice given yep. they're quite significant functions that we would there would still be a level of reliance right in terms of the regulator support yeah no exactly that's a um yeah great question lorena we we dove into that space um through our interview process um and there were a few things that popped up but overseer was um yeah obviously the the key one that that came up um 
I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head, but I could, yeah, see, see what else we picked up through the interviews and, and get that to you. Yeah, no, that, that's fine. It just seems like those seem to be the two critical ones that we would, you know, the devil's in the detail. Yeah, there isn't anything that springs to mind, to be honest. The, obviously, it was the big one that, you know, was the big sort of policy regulatory uh, impact that, that um, you know, has a cost associated with scoping up that work, uh, making the change to contracts, etc. that's required. Um, and other than that, um, there was just the changing environment of the local government um, policy in general. So there's quite a bit that was happening to so the future of local government, etc. So any impact for, from those type of documents um, was something we picked up. Yeah, no, I really um, appreciated how you had looked at those broader reforms in terms of bringing the information together. So I found that really useful. Yep. OK, thank you. Are there any other questions of anyone? Once again, I'd just like to express our sincere thanks to you as a team um, from KPMG. Uh, we appreciate the time and the effort that's gone in. Um, the detail and the quality of the report has been sincerely appreciated. And also sincere thanks for being able to join us slightly ahead of uh, the scheduled time. Um, your ability to adjust on your feet has been appreciated. So thank you. And thank you for Mali for being able to um, coordinate that as well. Yeah, no, thank, thank you for the um, opportunity. We've really enjoyed it. Um, and again, just a shout out to Marley because she's just been really great at coordinating everybody for us and making it very easy to work with all of you and really appreciate the opportunity. And it's a great project for uh, the, you know, for the, the results that you've had as a trust as well around the project outcome. So really just want to recognize that as well. The bigger picture. Yeah, and again, just from my end as well, um, you know, this project is um, Lake Taupo itself is a massive national Tonga and, and I think it's just the outcome that's been achieved to date has been fantastic um, as a whole. Um, and uh, yeah, it's good, good to see movement in this space. So um, yeah, I mean, well done to, to you, you guys as a collective as well. And thank you. Um, so under this item, item six, we have Four recommendations there. Um, I would like to suggest that we take them one at a time. Is there any objection to that? I broke them down in the case. You have broken them down. Sorry, Stu, you want to oh, say something? It was there? just in relation to Lorena's comment, because I I'd had some thoughts about the same issue, and I just want to offer my my thoughts on that one and, and, and curious some what Lorena's thought on that. Um, it, it strikes me thinking it through that, that the issues such as the oversteer one, the regional council would still have responsibility for monitoring compliance with the actual resource consent conditions, um, um, i.e. The, the technical side of, of the nitrogen discharges and, and whereas the, the new entity over that, the, say for example, the Topo District Council, um, would 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 be having to rely on regional council technical reports to ensure that that the um, NDRs were being were being complied with. Thank you. For your comment, was there something else, Stu? I'm just no, no, no. Just, just, um, discussing, discussing, and making pushing all the issues. But I make sure on the same page. Really, I'm not sure if there are any. Uh, yeah, I, I suppose um, it is hidden in the way that uh, both councils work together to be able to give the same result that we've been um, continuing to do over the past few years, noting that those functions won't necessarily be housed in one area. So the relationship between the councils to provide that information, provide that detail is going to be important. That's all I was trying to make a point. And was there anything else that needed to be considered? that would need that there was reliance what else was if it was to go to Topal district council what other information would the council need to rely upon from waikato regional council to ensure it could execute its functions in this respect i mean it seems to me that constructive and any relationships between the two councils are imperative no matter 
what option we would end on. Right? 100%. Yeah, it's and it's as you said, commentary as well, so it's very critical yeah. for the, the range we go forward for the other accounts. Thank you for your contributions, everybody. We have the first um, portion here that the report review of the Lake Total Protection Project Independent Review, 2nd December 2022, be received. Can I have somebody to move that? Thank you, Stu, a seconder. Thanks, Tom. Those in favour? Favour? Anyone, against? Anyone against? against? Carried. Thank you. Point two. John? Madam Chair. Um, thank you for the opportunity. TDC is proposing changes to the resolution with respect to recommendations two and three, uh, the Waikato Regional Council staff recommendations. We think recommendations two and three are materially different from the recommendations set out in the KP and GS independent analysis. As currently written, these two recommendations restrict Topo District Council's decision making the elected members' ability to consider other options to those proposed, i.e., wind up that top protection trust and transfer current management functions to Topo District Council. We think there are better alternatives to winding up the Lake Topo District Trust that should be further explored. For example, changing Lake Topo District Trust to a council controlled, controlled organisation of TDC. So I'll speak there. To that one. So we're proposing a change in resolution that should better reflect the key recommendations set out by key PAGs in the independent report being the serene energy service delivery arrangements to be delivered by the TDC. How do we follow this one, James? Um, so do we have to move this um, first or can we move to Councillor Williamson's suggestion? I think just make one suggestion. Um, but if we just make sure we're really clear on what number two actually yeah, means. Because what do you guess what I mean? Yeah. Perfect. Do we handle Which one are you talking about, John? Which one are you talking about? Which is actually referring to basically covering two and three. Yeah, so I, I was I was hearing hearing you. You were saying the same thing more relevant three three, so I just want to really understand the same article. So I broke them all down. Thank you um, for your question, Councillor Nebone. Um, essentially, what number two is seeking is a refresh of the project agreement. Um, that, that's essentially what it's doing. Um, and it might be useful to put up on the screen, James, um, the proposal from Councillor um, Williamson, so we can all get a view of what, what, what's currently on the table. Just with regard to process, there's nothing on the table just yet, because nobody has moved anything. Yeah. Um, and so the starting point would be to look at what's being proposed by Councillor Williamson, and we can work through um, whether there's a seconder for that, and then whether there is, um, I guess, support around the table for it once we get to that point. We can have a good discussion about what's on the table so that everybody's got clarity um, before going into the voting process is probably what I would suggest. Are you happy to share your wording there for James to put that up on the screen? Yeah. John? Yeah. Thank Right here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have a discussion on on the report. I would love to hear from even uh, Mr. Sent um, if we're about to watch it more, and obviously um, part, um, part of the. Uh, the group that's uh, done the last three years just got a bit of the report. We can have a bit of that. Was this? Um, Sorry, I, I thought that was what we were doing while KPMG was there. Um, yeah, I was happy with the report. 
I want to I'd love to at the end of the discussion uh, any of the team or even um, Mr. Spence, because Mr. Spence has been associated with it for, for a long time and, and what, what his thoughts of the report um, as well um, before we you know um, move any motions or put anything down because you know the more information I have and and you know the feeling what has been coming through it's better for me as well. Mr. Stent, is there anything but, Madam Chair, you'd like um, to yeah. um, I'm, I'm reluctant to make comments on the trust perspective. Um, we have been yeah, um, yeah. back on the front of the full matter of attention. Your report and the yeah. of the report that was in this network. I appreciate the question. Um, I don't think it's appropriate for the trust to be commenting on the, the report's recommendations any further. Um, the report was commissioned on a, on a strict basis. We participated and responded to the uh, report author's uh, inquiries uh, and fed our comments back through that process. And I think it would be inappropriate for us to probably readdress that. And as I've just said, just as a process what you requested um mike is i actually think that discussion is going to come up over the next two points that are being presented to us to make a decision on is that we will have that discussion through those through these next two two recommendations that we have um before us and then he wants to be the code this one as well for the third part right? yeah so just that just what's involved there. She's probably what was about yes. recommendation two is probably um redundant it could have been included once one resolution. So maybe it's not materially inaccurate and accurate. It's probably accurate, it's probably unnecessary. Okay. Just waiting for James to have this um, typed in so that we're all afforded the opportunity. Gwen, you've got a question yeah. or comment then? Oh, it'd just be good to run through the reasoning of the CCO with Councillor Williams. Not, not that I'm opposed with it at all, as an idea. Uh, just from uh, understand the benefits of it. Absolutely, Gwen. Um, as soon as we get this um, documentation so that everybody's able to read what this is. Um, yeah. Just a Just a part of it. Okay, so we've got the original, the original point two that the officials working group refreshed the Lake Taupo Protection Project governance, management, and reporting arrangements formed around the delivery phases of the project with Taupo District Council providing in house delivery of the management functions. Councillor Williams has proposed that the Joint Committee recommends any future service delivery arrangements to be delivered by the Taupo District Council in place of point two. Um, is there discussion, questions, comments around these points that are presented before us? Yep. You know, to me, the is can we understand the differences between the two? Because the, the staff the one staff here started to refresh my rating, we were refresh with a view to some of this. We need the same enjoyment. 
how much the time frame for her body was needed. I think we need to ask the question of Councillor Williamson um, about what the key difference is. Well, can I yeah. answer that? What, what, what we, we were, were saying is a total district council is that how we decided or chose to deliver the outcomes would be up to the people sitting at our council table to make that decision. We felt that the joint committee didn't have the place to be able to direct the district council how to ensure that those outcomes came to be, that that would be up to local district council how that would roll. Um, so we just felt that the first clause was being a little bit too directive and that if our councillors at our council table didn't agree with that, that we could be in quite a predicament. Whereas uh, we were saying with the um, the proposal that Councillor Williamson has put forward that the future delivery arrangements will be delivered by the Total District Council, basically how they saw fit to enable that to happen. That's the key difference. Okay, so just being devil's advocate, I'm not trying to be difficult. How does the original one preclude Topo District having flexibility and how they gave the feet to delivering those functions? Ladies, through the chest. Well, it's put more relevant to recommendation three, the question. Just following up, you know, the chair's colleagues. So then do we want to look <coughs> three before two? Can we just move to three? Okay, so one highlight in the other is Councillor Williams. Yeah, so we have the original recommendation. That subject to the approval of Topal District Council, the Lake Topal Protection Trust commences the process of wind up and transfer of current management functions to Topal District Council. Um, the replacement there recommends the Waikato Regional Council, subject to Waikato Regional Council approval, is removed as a set law of the Lake Topal Protection Trust. So, I've got some legal advice on, I have no idea whether that's feasible or not. Um, it's a set law, you know, I thought set laws were set laws, so they're always set laws, but I don't know. <laughs> Through the chair, I think that the, uh, the one way to, to drive this would correct me, well, this, uh, if approved, uh, the recommendation would enable WRC to avoid incurring additional costs. Oh, oh, I get that, John, but I'm not convinced that, yeah. that you can change the fact that WRC was a set law of, of the trust. And that is what it is. I don't know that it can be. Oh, I would say it's not subject to work at a regional council approval, so it's obviously. Yeah, but I, but I mean, it's kind of useful to understand that because I don't, I don't see how you can wind back to when the trust was originally settled here. What well, well, I'd like to um, that you why would they want to be well this was asked the question why would you want to be involved yeah. that, that's a different question yeah. completely different question yeah. what was on quite open to the area yeah. but, yeah. Yeah. but um that, that's that's making quite a specific recommendation and i think we need to be really clear on whether or not that is feasible knowing uh, that we have a person perhaps with suitable qualifications mr Sten. Are we allowed to ask you the question <clears throat> without precedence? Um, um, Madam Chair, um, Council of the is brief. Uh, you can't uh, remove the original set laws, but you can vary your trust to modify the set laws out. So you can put at, at the moment um, some decisions uh, in the hands of all the set laws uh, that can be varied to redefine which of the sequels that those powers going forward. You cannot um, remove a sequel they are sent to Amiibo. Briefly stated, um, recorded as the initiating party, so that's what they say. Thank um, you, Mr. Steen. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Steen. I guess the next question on the back of what um, Clayton's just said is um, 
the regional council would need to know what future liabilities are going to potentially occur um, if it were to go down. Suggestions and plans would be made. And I don't think that would be, I'm guessing that wouldn't be a five minute conversation. But just to be very, very honest from a total district council perspective, we have an issue around the wind up of the trust. So we see if we take this in house, that continuing with the Lake Topal Protection Trust actually enables us to work through the process of this being done and looking at the potential of something like a CCO to keep the trust operating. Part of the reasons that we want to do that is around the trust's independence, around their relationships with people in the total community and beyond, and also their charitable status, which enables them to obtain and seek funding from other avenues, which may mean that it doesn't actually attribute a large cost to the total and beyond communities. It also enables people within the total area to, if they have a a concept in mind, um, and I can allude to one example of a large piece of weed sitting in the lake that is potentially going to travel down the lake, which is quite a concern. There's some funding open to the people that are local to that area um, that they have been told that they could have, but they don't have a vehicle to move themselves forward to do something about that. But the trust could enable that process to take place. So just to give you some background, Mike, as you asked earlier. And she is the area of the um, Social District Council deciding to um, and then create a CCO. Isn't there the funds that are in the trust um, available to go into that C CCO to help fund the movement? The problem that you may run into with that, Mike, is that if the trust is disestablished, getting another trust established with a charitable status is going to be quite challenging where we sit at the moment. That's what I'm saying. Why would you, you know, dissolve that trust? You know, with the CCO and that money, that's what I'm just, you know. And then that's, I think, what the Topal District Council is trying to suggest. If we took out the winder, we would actually be happy with the rest of that recommendation. Um, that that discussion. Uh, uh, you referred to the trust case, the fact that there is a launch mandate in the uh, the trustees have uh, a recommendation model on where those who can be replaced go, go, uh, subject to the successful agreement. Uh, but the trustee does have some area where they are no, it's not necessarily to another uh, entity for management just for clarity. Thank you. And through the chair of the mad point, I'm making that new. New governance to manage the race, which will be um, established by this council and the funding body. So, work right out or whatever. I think through the two, I also want to just for the council to uh, read this commentary about in the conclusion. It's beautifully captured about the mm -hmm. relevance of why the county council talks to the council, council and the relationship with trust. Um, so. We've got. Um... Lorena there as well. I see your hand up. Sorry, Lorena, it took me a little while to catch, catch your catch hand, hand up. My up. Apologies. My apologies. That's right, Madam Chair, and thank you. Um, it has been a bit difficult to hear the conversation around the table, just noting that there's a bit of echoing. Um, but I just, I, I, I think what I got out of today from KPMG is a clear direction around the possible the option of Topal District Council. What I'm still not clear, and I think there is a bit more further consideration, and perhaps this is phase two of what you think about when you start your wind down process or what move into a transition process, I would say, are the items that they've raised on their report, which are in our papers on page 34, 435 and the consideration of iwi collaboration on 37 um, and what I personally would like to see is that there's a bit more working through what they have identified as future considerations under the legal status the reporting, the structural arrangements, the scope of what gets covered and then under management similar considerations so that um, 
we can sort of weigh up because uh, as I was alluding to with um, KPMG, the devil's in the detail um, and there's a lot of considerations that we need to take into account. And so I'm, while we are putting different approaches now on the table, I'm not sure that we've looked at it in, a, in its entirety. So I, I'm i wondering whether rather, I, I tend to agree that we need to do, I don't know a refresh, but we need to take on board the KPMG report to inform what that refresh would look like under each of those elements of governance and management. But my concern is I don't think we've got all of the pieces of the puzzle right now to make a, a, a clear direction of what that would look like right now. And in my mind, that's the work of transitioning that we have to pick up now and run with based on their recommendation. And I think that's the challenging part when we trimmed up the review of the trust um, in light of our expenses that we uh, came back to a very, very basic review. Go ahead and you've got your hand up there and then we'll move to Marley. Yeah, someone think to me really, um, you know, if this committee was to accept the recommendation or we get a feeling on how parties feel about the recommendation um, of transitioning to TDC, I mean, I guess that's the first step. And then there'll be options of what that might entail in terms of the best way to do that, which could include, um, you know, a CCO, if TDC thinks that's one of the best options. Understanding how that would kind of work you know, from a from a crown perspective in terms of protecting investment in the future and those sorts of things as well would be helpful. Um, but that's the next kind of bit to work out, I think. Sure, thank you. Just in light of the discussion that's just been had, I wonder if we move through item two and then perhaps we could recommendation two and then perhaps we could look to adapt or change item three. It seems that item two is acceptable following that discussion. Do I, do I have somebody that would be pre prepared to move recommendation two? Yeah. Thank you, Stu. Just pause you, Chair. And am I removing John's part? Yes, we're going to remove that. We're just going to take the original motion. Being staff recommendation two, we've got Stu that's moved that. Could I get a seconder for that? Thanks, Mike. Is there any other further discussion? Ali? Not on that matter, I'm not on that motion, but just um, a suggestion for the next bit for you to consider. Okay, can we move to the next bit when we get to the next bit? Is that okay if we move this one and then we discuss the next one? Sure. Uh, those in favour of the motion that the officials working group refresh the late total protection governance, management and reporting arrangements formed around the delivery phases of the project with total district council providing in-house delivery of the management functions. We have a mover, we have a seconder. Those in favour? Anyone against? Carried, thank you. So we then move to item, uh, sorry, recommendation three. Marley, you had something that you wanted to comment on there or something? Perfect. Just while the recommend, thank you, Madam Chair. Just while the recommendations are up on the screen, um, as a starter, if we were to remove any reference to Lake Topal Protection Trust and wind up, that might be a good place to start. I concur with that suggestion. So the maintenance process and two trains to current energy Yes. Any other comments there? So if we take out the wind up and the word and. Yeah. So it would now read 
that subject to the approval of Taupo District Council, the Lake Taupo Protection Trust commence the process to transfer the current management functions to Taupo District Council. Peter. Um, yeah, You're probably right there. Thanks, Peter. Commence the process to transition. Through the chair, this this is without prejudice to whatever district council do with the governance slash management within. That's my understanding. Does anybody have any yeah, difference? We're commencing a process. Commencing a process. Yeah. Um, well, look, can I just make a comment? Um, we're a new committee, obviously, and um, it would be really useful going forward. Um, We've got um, amendments to the potential agenda recommendation to houses that we've come from that we could all get together and formally, you know, three or four days prior so we can all thrash them out and avoid the challenges of having to make decisions on who's the run out of the seat. And I think we have had the challenge around the timing of receiving the papers that it has yeah. been a very, very short and tight time frame. Um, I was only able to communicate with Tonganui yesterday. Um, at which point I found out that he hadn't actually received the papers and was completely unaware of today's meeting. Um, so it hasn't been easy. To be fair, Lorena hasn't received things, so it hasn't been a, an incredibly clear process. But being what it is, we can't change the past. But as you're suggesting, Stu, we can change moving well, forward. I'm going to apologise on behalf of Waikato Regional Council too, because we, it was a week late to uh, come to the decision on who so the end committees, um, so that obviously for our staff, uh, appreciate that. Appreciate that. And there's, there's always a reason why, Mike, and I think we're all saying this is a stake in the ground. We can't change the past. Let's just move forward to the future, um, as Stu has suggested. So I think, sorry, Gwen, you've got your hand up. Yeah, just, just from what Stu raised, I, I think, yeah, if we could in the future, even almost having a, a workshop type session, I can come down to Taupo with a bit more notice um, in, in person, those sorts of things, if some of those options need working through as well. So we could possibly consider that in the future. Got it, Gwen, that's sincerely appreciated. Um, so we have a recommendation there before us. I think we've had some good discussion up to this point. Um, is there anyone that would like to move, please, that subject to the approval of Taupo District Council, the Lake Taupo Trust, sorry, the Lake Taupo Protection Trust commence the process to transition the current man management functions to Taupo District Council. Thanks, Stu. Could I get a seconder for that, please? Peter, Peter thank you. Uh, those in favour? Sorry. I... Anyone against? Carried. I'm having to move number four, members. And number four. Thanks, Stu. Um, Stu has moved that the progress report on the refresh of the late total protection arrangements from the officials working group. Can we take the wind up out of that again? Are you happy with that, Stu? If we oh, put yeah, that up? And turn it back to transition. Yes, please. OK, so we have there that a progress report on the refresh of the Lake Taupo protection arrangements from the officials working group and transition the current management functions from the Lake Taupo Prote Protection Trust is provided to the next Lake Taupo Protection Project Joint Committee meeting. Stu has moved that. We would just need a seconder for that. Thank you, Lorena. Um, those in favour? Anyone against? Carried. Kia ora, everybody. Thank you very much. I am suitably impressed that we have got to 12 10. And Hong, am I able to ask you if you would conclude with a 
Karakia to release us on our journeys from here. Thank you. We officially close the meeting at 12 p.m. Thank you to our friends in Wellington for joining us. We appreciate you. I know it's not easy online, but thank you, thank you, thank you. Good.